Welcome back to MVM. Today we have a Kickstarter preview. This one is from Cackleberry Games. It is a one to four player tile placement slash worker movement style game in which you are recreating the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. Yeah, and you're going to be building a giant pyramid by the time this game is over. Placing these tiles, planting seeds, hopefully having your seeds cascade down all of these waterfalls and getting as many points on the pyramid as possible. There is also a little bit of take that in this game because as you plant seeds, you're going to be cascading down the waterfalls and knocking other player seeds or victory points out of the game. And as with any of these Kickstarter previews, this is strictly a prototype that you're seeing here. Some of the changes may yeah. obviously happen prior to the Kickstarter. Make sure you go to the Kickstarter page to see everything. We have a game in progress, and you're going to either play a short game or a long game, depending upon the bases here. And all these bases will connect together, forming a length, meaning your pyramid's going to be a larger pyramid or a smaller pyramid, meaning the length of the game is going to be longer or shorter. At max, it's going to be around 60 minutes to play the entire game. Right. What you're going to be doing is, on your turn, you're going to be picking one of the tiles. Now, at the start, none of these tiles above this baseline are going to be placed at all, nor any of the scoring tiles that you see here. So it's strictly going to be this base. On your turn, you're going to pick any one of these tiles, and in a four-player game, there are going to be four available tiles to pick from. When you pick one of these tiles, you're going to look at it, and you're going to place it in any one of the locations across that connects into the base below it, basically. And as you build the pyramid, you have to have two structures below it to build up. And the reason why you want to do this is because you want to take your worker and move them up these particular stairs to get to the top. Each of these different place, uh, placement pieces is going to have a waterfall, it's going to have a picture or a, some kind of mural on the wall, and it's going to have an area at the top where your worker is going to be eventually moved to. The idea is that you want to move your worker up these locations and plant seeds, which are your discs in the game, and let them cascade down to be able to get points through the course of the game. Yeah, and there's a wide variety of these tiles. Some are going to have more water waterfalls than others. Some are going to have no, no stairways that are going up. Some of them even have a little doorway so that you can move laterally across on the same level. After you pick your tile, you're going to place one of your workers and at the start of the game, you're only going to be able to place on this base level. But as the game progresses, instead of placing a worker, you can move an existing worker that's already worked his way up the pyramid. But at the start of the game, you're going to place your worker. And when you place them, you're then allowed to move up to three spaces. Movement in this is either upstairs or it's through different doorways that you see here. And you're objective here, again, is to try to move them up the pyramid to locations where you're going to see a waterfall coming down. These waterfalls are going to allow you to plant one of your seeds. Now, you can only plant a seed if that location is unoccupied when you move to it. Right. In fact, when you reach an unoccupied tile or an unplanted tile, you have to stop your movement and you may plant a seed there. You can also, when you move, if you run over one of your other guys that's already on the board, you can suspend your movement and then move three additional places. So you can kind of chain your movement through the course of the game. As we said, we already have a game kind of in progress. So I'm going to show you what happens if I were to take a normal movement at this point of the game. I'm going to pick one of the tiles and I'm going to pick this one here. Then I get to place this tile. And as we said previously, you have to place it in an area that makes sense. Obviously, you can't place it off to the side because it has no base here. You can't place it in any of these locations because there's not a base underneath of it. So my legal areas right now are here, here, and here. And as the game moves along, it gets progressively harder and more constrictive to place your tiles in a place that is good for you. In this instance, I'm going to place it right here. And you'll see the reason why I want to place it in this location. Then I get to move up to three spaces. And as being the white player, I'm going to move this guy down the staircase for one movement and up the staircase for two movements. Now I've reached a location that does not have a worker and does not have a seed in the little pool that you see here. This is going to allow me to plant my seed there. What happens here is this is going to give me victory points depending on how high it is at the end of the game. Then you get to do the cascade effect. Yeah, the cascading is the really cool part, so follow us here if you will. Jeremy planted right here and it's going to follow any waterfall down and continue cascading. So he gets the two directly below it, and then that one will cascade to that one, and that ends because there's no more waterfalls coming down here. This one is going to cascade down to there. So he's effectively taken three seeds into new locations and then bumped two different players at two more locations, 
and got a ton more points before the end of the game. Now all this can change on my turn. I might be able to place above him and cascade down again. You're going to have various spots throughout this pyramid, some of which may not cascade at all depending on how you've built up the tiles, and some might be really sweet spots for huge cascades. And that's going to keep happening around the table. Each player is going to take their turn, taking one of the tiles, placing that tile, either placing a new worker at the base level or moving a pre-existing worker up to three spots and planting seeds in any location uh, or stopping their, their movement and then planting a seed in that location if there is not a seed directly below it on that tile. Yeah, and we're going to continue doing that until we've reached a point where there are fewer spots left to place tiles at the top of that pyramid than there are the number of players. Once that happens, it triggers the end of the game, and then you're going to end up scoring up all of these rows from the ground up. So scoring is very easy in this game. You're gonna look at each of these individual rows and you're gonna slip in these scoring tiles as the pyramid uh, progresses and starts to build out. Every single one of your seeds in the bottom row is worth one victory point and they get progressively worth more. So two, three, four, five, six, and seven, all the way up the pyramid for each one of your seeds. You're gonna add all that up and you're gonna move your scoring marker across the scoring track. And then each player is going to score for every single one of the murals that shows a flower on the actual tile where their seed is located. So if you look around the board, you see yellow here is not only going to score three points for the row he's in, but he's also scoring three points for the number of flowers on that mural. Right, and those flowers can make a huge difference. A ton of the tiles have those on them, and they yeah. range from one to four. Some tiles don't have them, but that's going to come into play after you've scored as normal. So this is a very interesting game. This is super, super simple to, to teach people. It's, it's both casual and it's also enthusiast because there's a lot of different things that you're going to learn as the game progresses. The first time you sit down, you're going to think, oh, this is pretty simple, and it is for the most part. However, the placements of the tiles, how you block other players out, how you move your guys, and how you set up future actions is important, especially as the temple starts to close at the top of the pyramid. Yeah, absolutely. And also those cascades, when those happen, those are those moments in this game where someone who's just getting their feet wet with this game are going to say, oh, I see how it works. When someone places a seed and it cascades and takes three of your spots, you're going to learn from that and you're going to want to play it again. It's also very interesting as you start to progress up the sides of the board, how they get a little bit safer because you can't cascade from the right-hand side or the left-hand side to get in there. And as I said at the very beginning, this is a very easy game to teach. It's only a four-page yeah. rule book. So it's very simple to teach for a variety of different people. That is Gardens of Babylon, one to four player. It can also be played solo. If you guys have any questions about the game, make sure you check out their Kickstarter page, subscribe to us, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, everything else that we do. We'll catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.